Okay, so I, I went ahead and did the rest of my sculpting. I have a few different layers here. I've got one where um, I just kind of did this a little bit to the top there. One where I added the main texture and then one where I kind of just added some more detail on top just to give it a little bit more um, a little bit more feel to it. And that one I turned down the strength um, so I could, you know, I don't want all of these to necessarily be the same level of importance. So it's really this one that's the most important still. Um, so I'm going to save this out or rather export these maps out um, as both a normal map and a displacement map. So I'm going to select my orange base mesh. I always like to do that just to make sure it finds the right object. Go to extract texture maps, new operation. Um, and I normally don't name these, but um, so I can say first I'm going to do a displacement map and most of these settings should be fine. Um, I might also, I'm gonna change this to subdivision though, and I'm gonna increase this probably pretty high. I might do a 4K map, um, just because, uh, you know, you want as much detail as possible. And we can always redo this operation later if we decide we did something wrong or that we wanna lower res one or something like that. Map type, texture, we're not gonna do ptex stuff um, save this out now for the um, for the displacement map we need this to be open exr 32-bit rgba um, displacement maps require a big image file to work properly um, because they're going to end up actually displacing the geometry literally rather than just making a fake illusion version of it like a bump map does. Um, so I'm gonna just name this orange disp01. Save that as an EXR. Turn turn this off. We don't need to see a preview as a, of it as a bump map. And I'm just gonna extract that. And we're done with that. And before I even um, go out of Mudbox, I'm going to also run a normal map. Um, normal map extraction. And a normal map is like a bump map, um, but it's more detailed. And um, it's m mostly used in games and stuff. Um, because game engines cannot run displacement maps like a... Uh, ray trace render can uh, I might make this one a bit smaller that one doesn't need to be as big but I'm basically going to keep most of this stuff the same uh, we want this to be tangent and the normal map does not have to be an EXR so this can just be a PNG or a JPEG a Targa I might make this a JPEG um, and I'm just going to call this orange norm 01 and again don't want to preview that as a bump map in here that's pointless so there's that one and uh, the last important step here that we can't forget is to reduce our uh, orange mesh back down to its original state and then re-export it as a new FBX so I'm going to hit page down a few times till I get to level zero back to this one that I originally made because this is still technically being affected by my sculpt layers even at this basic level. Um, so I need those sculpt layers on. And I'm going to still have my orange selected and I'm just going to file export selection and then save this near where the other one is so this this one was orange base mesh export this one will be orange sculpt mesh export good to keep some sort of a naming convention going on so back in Maya we 
can import that FBX we just created. Make sure that the wireframe looks the same and everything, which it does. It's going to have some sort of a, a material on it that came from Mudbox. Um, Lambert 2, it's just going to call it. Um, but we are not going to use that. We want to, of course, apply a um, Pixar surface material. And in the next video, we're going to apply our bump, our normal map and our displacement map and see what the differences between those are. And that's